Here are two flat 2D animation style characters that I've modeled in Maya. In this video I'll go over how I model these characters, and in the next video I'll start the rigging process. Now these characters were never designed to be in the same world, but I wanted to have a very simple character to go over the initial concepts with, and then a more complicated one that has line work and details so we can go further. So here's a lineup of polygonal shapes that I used to create the lines and the shapes for these type of characters. If we look at the far left, we have two circles that have black outlines. They look pretty much identical, but there's two different approaches of how we can create this look. The one on the left is made by simply overlapping shapes, but if we look from the camera view, it looks like a colored shape with an outline. And you can adjust the thickness of the line by scaling the shapes, and if you offset them, you can create a tapered line. The one next to it is created with one surface, but the faces around the edges have a black material applied to give that outline. And you could scale the edges of those faces to get a thicker and a thinner line, and you could also offset to get that tapered line as well. Those shapes were initially created by bringing in a polygon sphere, cutting off the back faces, and scaling it flat. That gives you a perfect circle from a front view, but it does give you four-sided polygons around the edges, and then triangular polygons at the pole in the center. And this could be fine if it's just a flat shaded object, but if you ever need to do a texture across that, that can be a nightmare. So if you don't want to deal with those triangles, you can achieve the same look by bringing in a polygon plane and modeling the vertices to make a circle. For additional lines, I'll just create a simple polygon and model it into the shape. This shape is also four-sided polygons, so if you wanted to sharper point the edges, you could grab a vertice and pull it inward, we just don't want to go too far and have it overlap because that'll create a rendering artifact. If you know that you always want that part of the shape to come to a point, you may want to select those vertices and merge them so that you have a triangle. So often what I'll create is a shape like this where you have quads in the middle and triangles at the ends. And this is basically the same shape, but I've extruded the edges to have another row of faces that I can use as a mask. This shape is a half circle that was extruded and extended down, so we have quads primarily, but it does get into the triangles for that nice rounded top. And this last shape is just one surface with the faces around the edges painted black, but I've deleted the two faces on the left hand side and merged vertices to create that tapered black line. I think one of the main things that throws people off with these type of characters is that you can't just move and rotate them the same way that you would with a standard 3D rig. So it takes a little bit of planning to know what kind of shapes and poses and the type of movement that you want to get out of these type of characters. This character is planned for three quarter poses and to be staged in long shot views. And we would never rotate around to see his back view, so I didn't build that. In fact, if we zoom in on the hand, the resolution is really low. So it wouldn't hold up in a close up like this, but it wasn't built for that. I'll probably add a little more resolution as I rig this character, but the goal was to make him as simple as possible for these initial videos. I did build his body with enough resolution to get C curve and S curve poses. And if you look down here, we've got that one shape with the tapered edges that can be used to give his body dimension. The limbs are basically silhouettes made of a bunch of different separate pieces. So we don't have to worry about how they stack in front of each other. They just have to look good as a pose overall. Now this guy was built with higher resolution so he could be closer to camera and we can get more range of motion out of him. And we could see how the mouth was made of this simple line. This nose and the fingers were made from this shape over here and his ear was made from the shape on the end. Now I wanted to try something a little different with the eyes on this character. I would like the way it looks where it's white with just a partial black line above and below it as opposed to a black line surrounding it completely. So here's where I use that line that has the mask so we can shape the drawing that you want around the eye but it has that built-in skin color mask to hide the white underneath. And I also wanted to try something different with the body this time. In the past, I've used one surface and created a row of faces for the bottom of the shirt to separate the shirt from the pants. But with that setup, when you pull around vertices for the shirt, it also affects the pants. So this time I created them as separate surfaces so they could be moved and rotated around independently of one another, and they could be treated a little bit more like a ball and socket joint that you might set up in a 3D rig. For parts of the body that need to look like they go in between other surfaces, like the arms under the cuff, and the pants and the socks around the legs, I've done something a little bit bizarre with the geometry where I've built a band that wraps around and behind it. You could achieve the same look by having a surface in front and one in the back and having enough space in between for that other surface to fit in there, but I kind of like having this one band that wraps around to eliminate the possibility of that separation. The hands are built with separate pieces on this guy as well. You could have built them with one surface, but I actually think you get more control as to having the fingers and the thumbs separate 
And then it's really just your job as an artist to make sure that the lines connect to the hand and the poses look good. I'll go over this in another video, but here are a set of arms that I created so we could do a 3D turnaround with our character's hands. Each one of them would have their own rigs and you'd swap between them. The shoes are similar to the nose model, so we have the triangles to give us the curvature at the front and the back of the foot, and it also has that cuff built around back. It has simple lines for laces, and the shoes will be rigged so we can shape them for perspective, but it'll also need an additional replacement shape so we can see the underside of the foot. And lastly, the mouth will be a bunch of replacement shapes, so we have the line mouth that can be used for these expressions, but I'll also use a mouth that has some depth where we can get some open mouth expressions, where you can sneak in a set of teeth and a tongue wherever needed. All right, so that's roughly how these guys are modeled. I may make some changes to the model and I'll probably make some additional pieces as I'm rigging them, but in the next videos, I'll take you through the rigging process.